is possible If you try and be patient It pays off while you're waiting The seeds you water will grow The rest will follow Cause this life's what you're making And some rules are for breaking Destiny will play its role, you know Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining us for tonight's webinar. This is our final webinar for summer camp. We are getting things ready up here, and we are excited to have you guys in just a few short weeks. First things first, just a couple housekeeping things. As many of you probably know by now, with our webinar platform, you guys are all muted and will not be able to yourself. There is a chat feature on your screen. Please feel free to use that if you'd like to ask us any specific questions. As always, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available uh, in the coming days for anybody that missed it or if uh, you'd like to share it with anybody else from your unit. A couple people I would uh, like to introduce and thank for joining us tonight. Um, our program director, Sam Hill, is in the house. Sam Howell is uh, on the call with us tonight. We'll probably hear from her a little bit later, as well as our base camp director, Mr. Dan Hill. And I am Greg Zidane, your camp director for this summer. Let's go to the next slide, Chris. I don't hear a At this time, I would like to introduce our returning business manager, Ms. Linda Walner, to talk about forms and DHS and all sorts of Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, forms needed, health forms. Everyone spending one night has to have A, B, and C signed by the doctor. You also have to be up to date with a tetanus shot. Now, that's good for 10 years. So if it's past the 10 years, you will need to get a new tetanus shot. 
Um, you have to do the 14 day screening prior to coming to camp. There's forms out there for that. Uh, so you'll start it at least 14 days ahead of time, checking your temperature and asking the questions, do you have this, that, or the other thing. Uh, if you are over 660 and over, you also have to have the supplemental health form signed by the doctor. You know, there's other forms with the, uh, the commitment transfer, transport form. Now, these are all on, I believe, uh, camp michiganscouting.org slash camp dash safety. You can get all these forms there. There's the check, the summer checklist form. Uh, DHS forms, everyone 21 and over must get a new DHS form this year. This is a new change. It's not once and done. Whether this is going to continue yearly or not, we don't know. But everyone coming to camp must have a new clearance form dated in 2021. Uh, there is a, a link online um, that you can email to uh, Lara, L-A-R-A. -A. The email uh, link is online for that. Um, when you email it, I know we get you get the confirmation back within about a week. You can either email that confirmation link to me, linda.walner at scouting.org, or make sure you at least bring a copy of it with you to camp. Uh, you should also keep you know copy for your records, but that's everyone 21 and over. I believe that's it for me now. Thank you, Linda. We do have some updates for you guys. Everybody is aware of what our mask policy um, was communicated as. We are happy to say we've got some updates to that. Uh, no longer requiring masks in uh, many instances. Those are in groups of less than 100 people outside. So for the majority of our camp programs, we will not be requiring masks. However, we are still encouraging them. And if anybody uh, would prefer to wear a mask, you're certainly welcome to do so. The other time that masks will be required will be any time that you are inside of a building. So at Cole, that would be the river store, the shop or the trade skills area, anytime that we're in a van or doing transportation for the river program. So scouts will still need to bring masks and have them with them, but they will get a little bit of reprieve. And as long as they're in a uh, smaller group setting, they will not need to wear them. We will be requiring them for our major camp wide events, such as the fire bowl, vespers, um, beast feast, and so on. So a little bit of relief there. Just so everybody is aware, as the COVID procedures and policies are changing around the state, we follow the guidance of LARA, that is our licensing agency. So just because the CDC or MDHS is saying one thing, we are held to whatever LARA is telling us. So uh, the rules are going to still be a little bit different than they are out in the rest of the world. But we're excited to say that things are beginning to open up and, and loosen up a little bit. So um, for the most up-to-date information on our COVID policies and what we'll be doing to keep everybody safe this summer, go to michiganscouting.org slash camp dash safety. I think David can put that in the chat for you guys, but michiganscouting.org slash camp dash safety. Thank you guys. Uh, next slide, Chris, I believe is about swim checks. We are encouraging everybody who can to do pre-camp swim checks. We're not requiring it. We are still offering swim checks on Saturday and Sunday at camp as we have in the past, but with um, crowding and, and other things and the desire for a smooth check-in process, encouraging anybody that it able to to do a pre-camp swim check. We have a couple opportunities around the state
to help facilitate that. Uh, we are hosting a pre-camp swim check day here on May 29th. There is also an opportunity at DBRA as well as Camp Rotary and Gerber. These are free events. However, we do ask that you sign up ahead of time so we know there and how to staff it. And you do not have to go to the event that coincides with the camp that you're at. So if you're coming to Cole for summer camp, you can do your swim check at DBRA or any of our other camps. There's also a number of other opportunities from the state that we're seeing float around. Um, so if you're having a difficult time, reach out and we might be able to help. Jay Richardson is the Council Aquatics Chair. And if you need help uh, working with a pre-camp swim check, uh, shoot him an email and he will help walk you through the process. You'll need a uh, approved person to conduct the test and that's typically a BSA life um, who is familiar with the procedures. Jay can uh, tell you more information on that. Next slide, please. A little bit about food service. Uh, we are continuing as a patrol cooking camp, as always. Uh, one change for this summer is we will be delivering your meals directly to your campsite. We are excited to be able to do this, uh, not only from a social distancing and, and crowding uh, factor, but also as a customer service item. Uh, so we will be delivering your meals times a day directly to your campsite for you guys to cook and prepare in your sites. Uh, there will be a little bit more uh, information on the details and ordering and ice and that kind of stuff, um, which is all available in the food service manual, which is available now online. We will be providing you guys with some sanitation supplies and equipment and uh, helping you guys with whatever you need throughout. The you guys are responsible for your own cooking equipment, as always. Uh, but if you need something, let us know. We probably have it in the uh, quartermaster supply somewhere. But if you guys don't let us know what you need, we're not going to know how to help you. So please do not hesitate to reach out and let us know what we can do. I want to uh, call on our base camp director, Dan Hill, to talk a little bit about uh, how Beast Feast is working this year and uh, some of the cool things we got going on down there on Monday night. Dan, take it away. Well, essentially, from a, a camper or a scout perspective, not much has changed to Beast Feast except that we've been able to make it feel bigger and better, and there'll be more space and everything. You know, trying to follow safety guidelines and whatnot has allowed us to space the event out more so that everyone's not on top of each other, address some tra traffic control issues and whatnot. We're able to, uh, Sam and the program staff are working on some new signs to make sure that navigating the event are the same. Uh, we're still having the, the cooking contest to just be a designated area where the cooking contest will take place uh, instead of all throughout the uh, outdoor skills area and the first year camper area and whatnot. So I think you'll see a, a much more organized, neat, clean, safe beast feast this year. Great, thank you, Dan. Uh, a couple questions showed up in the chat uh, regarding food delivery. Uh, we are gonna be delivering the food um, kind of along the same schedule that the normal pickup would have been. Um, I, I don't have the exact times in front of me, but rest assured you guys have the time to prepare your meal. If there's concerns regarding missed items or adjustments, uh, you will have an opportunity to interact with the staff members that will be delivering your food and you can mention it to them or you can always go back up to the commissary and and ask them directly if, if you would like. Yeah, for the returning units, the commissary window will still be there, but it's just so that everyone isn't all crowding up at the Cammon Center at the same time to gather their food, we'll be delivering stuff out. So like if you need a bag of ice in the middle of the day, stop by the Cammon Center and they'll be able to help you out and you know, all those sorts of things are still the same. Just, you know, we want to make sure that the bulk of your your meal is going out and we've got uh, a loose plan for things like condiments and uh, sundries and ice and whatnot for during meal times and everything. We're still uh, kind of laying out the plan based on staffing that's available at that time of day. Thanks, Dan. Uh, 
uh, backtrack to swim checks. I just got a text message that Core 5, um, for those of you in the Detroit area who are familiar with the five group, will also be offering um, swim checks pre-camp. We will uh, try to find some info on that and get it pushed out through our, our various uh, avenues of pushing information out. So thanks, Connie, for the update. Um, Sam, anything to add on Beast Feast or uh, anything you'd like to mention? If not, we'll go to the next slide. I was actually, I can mention just, I think I saw, we are going to be judging all the same uh, categories as last year. So you still get to compete on all fronts. It's just going to be a little bit more of a secretive judging going around instead of something you have to come register all with us in the crowd. And for the new units, that would be beverage, appetizer, side dish, main dish, dessert. And we are looking for those awesome displays on your table still too. That is right. So. Great, thank you guys. And uh, additionally to that, um, the, uh, the spirit and the decoration contest is still going on. We're encouraging you guys to get into it and come up with a theme around your your uh, Beast Feast setup. I've had a couple units reach out asking if Beast is mandatory. Um, the short answer to that is no. If you guys are not comfortable doing Beast Feast or going down to that, we're certainly not going to force you to um, reach out to us regarding um, you know, dinner for the night. But uh, if for whatever reason you guys aren't comfortable doing that, we're, we're not going to force you guys to go down to Beast Feast. Uh, we encourage it. It's a great event and we're doing doing a lot to keep it safe, but um, the, the term that gets shouted around is challenge by choice. So moving on, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle in just a minute, but I want to quickly address the last item on this list, which is patrol pods and wait list concerns. We are uh, sifting through wait lists all the time. I know some of uh, some of your scouts have been waitlisted for a long time. Um, I appreciate any specific concerns. Feel free to uh, reach out, and we'll try to address those. Um, you know, immediately on your your reaching out. Um, but are still adjusting waitlist and working on that as as we go through it. So please be patient. If you're having additional concerns with the patrol pod structure, um, feel free to let us know how we can help. We've been able to uh, accommodate just about it. Uh, we just sometimes have to think outside the box and get a little creative. Uh, Michelle, the floor is yours. Michelle is our Dean of Merit Badges. Okay. Um, we will be doing the blue cards uh, once again, through the Black Pug registration system. And then once you get home, you will be able to either print out those blue cards or transfer them directly into either Scout Book or Troop Master. Um, I will be giving you reports probably twice a week so that by the time uh, Friday comes, you'll know where your Scouts need to be for Friday morning. Uh, merit badge makeup <clears throat> and then Friday uh, at dinner time hopefully I can get you the final reports and that way if there's any issues when you go to check out on Saturday you can see me and we can get all issues taken care of before you ever leave camp um, we are looking for adult leaders who are merit badge counselors to help with merit badges uh, scouts always seem to learn better when they find someone who has practical life experience, whether it's a profession or a hobby. Um, it also helps with Honor Troop if you guys are going for Honor Troop. Just let us know, either Greg or reach out to myself, and uh, we can get you signed up to uh, assist us. We also will be doing Merit Badge Counselor training. Uh, more about that uh, when you guys get here at camp. Great, thank you very much, Michelle. 
Um, I'm going to jump through the next couple slides here real quickly, and then I'm going to uh, throw it over. Actually, I, I'm in the wrong part. Um, I'm, I'm happy to introduce Sylvia to our welcome home director and our new unit manager. Uh, Sylvia, if you can scoot over to part of the office and jump behind somebody's computer. Uh, Sylvia is going to talk to us about the welcome home program for new units, as well as the honor troop program for this year. In the event that Sylvia is not in the room over there, would anybody else like to speak to that? All right, I'm going to do it. Um, we do things a little bit differently at Cole compared to a lot of uh, different camps, and we want to make sure that uh, we are going to make your guys a customer service uh, experience that you won't forget. So several years ago, uh, we started the Welcome Home program. This is specifically geared towards units that are new to Cole Canoe Base. We give you guys uh, a little extra attention throughout the course of the week just to make sure that you guys are doing good with the patrol cooking and some of the other uh, things that are a little different around here. Uh, in addition, the home program has, has been expanded to uh, really be the first customer service uh, line, line for the camp. So Sylvia is taking over for Walt and she is very excited. She's got some good programs going on this year and you'll look forward to meeting Sylvia on Saturday morning when you guys come in for early check-in if not, or Saturday afternoon, if not Saturday, Sylvia will probably be around to meet you throughout the course of the week. If you are a new unit to Cole Canoe Base and you have not been in contact with Sylvia yet, I would encourage you to reach out to her uh, or reach out to me and I will get you in contact. It is a uh, an optional program, but it is, is a very good program. And as always, Saturday check-in is still available to all units. It is highly encouraged uh, and it is available at cost. There is no food service until Sunday night. Uh, the only change to Saturday check-in for this year is we are asking you guys to pre-register for that, which if you've made your final payment to summer camp, you should have already had the opportunity to do. If not, um, reach out to us and we'll figure it out. Uh, next slide is about the Honor Troop program. We have made some changes to the Honor Troop program for this year, mostly having to do with percentage, percentages and numbers, things that are proving a little challenging um, during the uh, pandemic and the, the current restrictions. Um, Honor Troop is our, our uh, way to reach out and you know recognize units that kind of go above and beyond and um do things around the camp so uh the commissioner staff will be working with you guys on that and you can uh, talk to them when you guys get here uh, about getting that award if you have questions ahead of time reach out to us and we'll help you out next slide please all right i'm gonna jump through the next couple slides real quick and then turn it over to commissioner rick for any comments uh parking and as in the past, we have a reasonably medium-sized parking lot, and when we have a lot of people in camp, the parking lot fills up very quickly. So uh, please work with our commissioner staff. They will be assigning parking, and uh, they will be directing and figuring out all of that. Uh, we ask for one vehicle to be left in your campsite that is hooked up to your uh, we ask that if you have a trailer in your campsite, that there is a vehicle hooked up to it at all times. That is a, a safety uh, concern because it allows uh, counterweight so the trailer doesn't run away on scouts or whoever's jumping in and out of it. Please keep your vehicle use in camp to a bare minimum. Uh, we are a walking camp. We don't want everybody driving around. But if you do have to drive around, please observe the five mile an hour speed limit. We've got kids running all over the place and we would hate to see an accident. Lastly, please respect the grass. Don't park. We would much appreciate it. Uh, the next slide is uh, regarding bicycles, I believe. We are a bike friendly camp. If you want to bring your bike, you're more than welcome to. You will have to check in with the outdoor skills staff to get a bike license. Uh, it's pretty much just a quick rundown on the rules. 
there is designated bike parking in various parts around camp and they'll go over all that with you. Thing to keep in mind is uh, helmets are absolutely required for anybody riding a bicycle, whether you're a youth or an adult. So get a helmet and wear it and bring it to camp to keep yourself safe. Of course, bikes are also uh, to observe the five mile an hour speed limit, just like cars. Next slide, please. If you would like to send your scout mail to camp, there's the address. Uh, scout name slash unit, and our address is 1356 East Greenwood, Alger, Michigan 48610. That address is available every um, uh, Noting the current delays with the postal service and stuff, if you wanna send things a little bit ahead of time, you're, you're welcome to do so. Um, some parents in the past have mailed us stuff and said, give this to him on Monday and give this to him on Tuesday. Uh, we don't have the bandwidth to do that. So we're gonna give the mail to the troop and let them sort it out. Uh, if you're expecting a special delivery, whether it's a uh, package of some sort, people order random Amazon camp supplies or whatever throughout the course of the week, feel free to uh, reach out to the commissioner staff and they'll keep an eye out for it. I believe the next slide is about golf cart. We do have a limited number of golf carts available for rent throughout the week. Uh, you can contact Linda Walner, our business manager, about that. All golf cart drivers must be at least 18 years of old, old and they do have to go through a uh, new online training this year. Uh, Linda can give you guys more information on that. Um, golf carts are intended for handicapped and disabled personnel. We're not uh, outfitted to be able to rent every troop of golf cart just because they feel like it. Uh, but if you need one for some reason or another, reach out to us and we'll try to help you out. Um, James, that is a good question. Must everyone in a pod have a bike for everyone to ride? I guess technically the answer would be yes, but uh, if half of the pod has a bike and the other half of the pod doesn't, they can just you know, work that out. We're, we're not really, um, uh, no, they, they can just kind of work around that. We do have a uh, family camp and a place to park your trailer if you've got parents or yourself that want to come up for the week but don't want to stay in a tent or hang out with the troop all week. We do have a number of full hookups available, both 30 and 50 amp service, as well as a number of tent sites. You can reach out for more information on that, there is a fee associated with Family Camp, but it is um, kind of removed from the base camp and it's a, a nice way to kind of break away from everything if that's what you want to do. Uh, reach out to Linda for more information. I believe, uh, let's see the next slide real quick, Chris. All right, before I talk, I'm gonna uh, introduce our head commissioner, Rick Walner, if he's over there. Um, Linda, is Rick over there? Sorry guys, I'm communicating with the office staff, which is uh, 150 feet away from me, but I can't actually see them, so. All right, hearing nothing. Moving on. <clears throat> we are happy to have the river program back again, as always. Um, a number of people have already reached out asking about canoe trips and how to sign up. If you are doing a one day canoe trip, that is either our one to two hour fishing site, our four to five hour trip, or our five to six trip, you can sign up for those Sunday night at the program expo when you get to camp. Um, trips are technically first come first serve, but we've always been able to have enough room to fit everybody. So, um, we encourage every troop to do something on the river while you guys are here. After all, um, the river is kind of what our whole camp is built around. Uh, if you're planning on taking a river trip, please be prepared to bring a cell phone with you as well as a way to keep it dry. Please be aware that you're gonna be required to have two adults or maintain a one to 10 ratio. And you, uh, the unit is responsible for bringing their first, first aid kit. Lastly, for any activity on the river, 
we do require closed toed shoes to be worn at all times. That is a closed toed shoe that can attach to the foot that does not include Crocs. Um, my recommendation, if you don't have a pair of water shoes, would be get an old pair of tennis shoes. Um, so helping your kids pack for camp and they're going on the river, make sure they have an extra pair of shoes. Uh, moving on to rump bumps. Uh, rump bumps is our tubing trips on the river. We are uh, happy to bring that back and have that exciting program going. Very popular, great way to cool off on a hot day. Same rules apply. We still need two adults and a one to 10 ratio. Um, and closed toed shoes are, rump bumps are open to everybody in camp, no matter your swimming level. We figured out a way to make it work. Um, very popular event. The one hour tubing trip is available on a walk up basis as it has been in the past. There will be times um, posted and announced at camp, but um, basically during program hours, you guys have a rump bump. You will need to bring your two adults with you and we would encourage you guys to do that as a patrol pod or uh, within your patrol pods. If you would like to sign up for our extended tubing trip, we do have a two hour option available. Um, that is uh, that one you do need to sign up ahead of time for just like you would a canoe or a kayak trip. Uh, moving on to the TV program. For those of you who have scouts who are eligible and uh, participating in the ATV program this year, please be aware there is a $45 fee per person and they will need to sign, um, have their parents or guardians sign a hold harmless agreement, which is online and they should have by now. Um, reach out to us if you need that. Uh, lastly, scouts who are participating in the ATV program will need to bring long pants, long sleeved shirts, and boots. And this year, while it's not on this slide, we are asking them to bring their own pair of gloves. Likewise, if you have scouts um, in the climbing merit badge or planning to go to climbing, ask that they also bring their own pair of gloves uh, if they're gonna be doing anything including repelling. Uh, we'll have a limited number on hand if, if need be, but you guys can help us out by bringing your own. Uh, moving on to the next slide. I have connectivity issues, so I don't know if it, slid, if it changed or not. Um, we are still looking for a number of staff positions. We've got openings in just about every program area somewhere. Uh, if you guys have scouts or know people or your scouts have friends or you yourself are looking for something fun to do this summer, give us a holler. We've got a spot for you and we are excited to have a rated full canoe bay staff. We still have a number of paid and volunteer positions available. It does include housing and your meals for the summer. And it is an absolutely wonderful life changing experience that uh, will serve your scouts and your kids very well throughout the rest of their life. Uh, if they're thinking about it, touch with us and, and we'll help give them all the information they need. Before we move on, is there anything else from the rest of the program team or the Cole team that anybody would like to say at this time? All right, on our next slide, we've got uh, shout outs to some of the events that we've got coming up throughout the rest of the, in the fall. We do have the Venturing Officers Association's Rifle River Gauntlet on June 5th. That is a fun river-based event, water-based event, starting with a canoe race and then their own little spin on the water carnival in the afternoon. That is open to all scouts who are venture age, not just ventures. Come on out for the weekend and get ready to have some fun. Connie Nye is the chairperson for that event. If you'd like more information, get in touch with Connie or get in touch with me and I will get you in touch with Connie. This upcoming Saturday as after tomorrow is Mix Fix. That is our spring work around camp, get this place ready weekend. We are still looking for volunteers. If you're looking for something to do Saturday, come on out and we'll put you to work. 
food and camping is included in that one as well. This fall, we've got Wilderness First Aid on September 18th, our famous haunted campsite event in October and our fall program weekend, the weekend of September 11th. That weekend will be a council-wide initiative, uh, which will include merit badges and other summer camp type activities. Uh, look for more information to come on that. Finally, if you've got scouts that are looking for some high adventure this summer that haven't figured out what they're doing yet, we do have the Great Lakes Kayak Adventure and our Ogemaw Trails ATV trip, what we would refer to as week eight. That is the first full week of August. If you've got scouts that are 14 and older, uh, they can join us for that weekend. There are um, special and limitations for each trip. Feel free to reach out to me for more information. We've got plenty of spots available for both of those. Uh, I believe we have reached the question and answer portion of our uh, presentation. Greg, so one question was related to um, if they have multiple uh, trailers, do they need to have um, all trailers continue to be hooked up to a um, truck when they're in their campsite? So it kind of depends on the purpose of this. If you have multiple trailers that um, scouts or leaders are going to be getting in and out of or on and off of throughout the course of the week, then yes, those trailers need to be hooked up to a vehicle or they need to have their own stabilizing system, X or whatever. If you have a trailer that you're just using to haul bikes up and it's going to sit in the corner and be empty throughout the course of the week, you don't need a uh, vehicle to be attached to that one. And if you'd like, we can provide you with a place to park it so it's not in your way during the week as well. Um, Brian, I believe the parent video presentation you're looking for is available at michiganscouting.org slash camp dash safety. Um, uh, if not what you're looking for, reach out to me and I'll try to help you out. Uh, the, if you have a scout leader that is arriving later than the rest of the group, they will bring their paperwork with them when they check in um, and they will need to check in with the business office uh, just like they would otherwise. Uh, no, you will not need to leave Beast Feast to eat. Uh, there will be kind of designated eating and not eating areas and stuff like that set up. Dan and Sam and the rest of the program team are, are working that out. Uh, but no, you don't have to take your food back to the campsite to eat it. Uh, David, you've been monitoring the, the chat feature here. What am I missing? Uh, question on picnic tables. Um, as far as logistics of, um, you know, accommodating number of picnic tables for different sized troops. Uh, I presume that uh, we will have their projected attendance before they arrive at camp and our quartermaster staff will coordinate uh, moving picnic tables around on the weekends. But if they have any concerns, uh, they're welcome to email us and uh, we'll make sure that we're able to accommodate the request before they arrive. Correct. And we've got more picnic tables than we've had in the past, so we'll be able to spread them around. Uh, and if you need more tables throughout the week, let us know and we'll try to help you out. Um, there's, I, I remember that question. There's not really a hard limit on uh, how many people can be sitting at a picnic table that I'm aware of, um, but we do need to maintain social distancing. And generally, if they're in the same pod, they're okay. Um, Part-time adults registered for parking and all that, reach out to Linda and she'll work with Rick to help figure that out. Uh, if you have questions about DHS letters, uh, reach out to Linda. She is an expert on all things having to do with that. Um, but 
try to get your letters in so that uh, you have them in time for camp. Uh, the email function is moving pretty swiftly, is my understanding. Um, if you're not co not comfortable doing email, you can you can do snail mail as well. Um, get some kind of confirmation when you when you do that. Reach out to Linda; she'll help you out. There is also the option to fax it uh, to the state uh, agency to get your clearances. Fax would be good as well. Thank you, David. Uh, any other questions that I'm missing, guys? If you are got a question I haven't answered, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Greg, this is Linda. Um, hey, Linda. I'm not sure that it was brought up, but uh, just remind the parents, this year there's no visitors at camp. Yes, thank you. So please remind them not to bother coming up because we cannot allow them in. Thank you, Linda. Um, there was a question asking about keeping a car parked at the campsite for transportation in case they need to leave with a scout because of COVID. Um, the, the short answer is no, we're gonna ask you to leave um, whatever you guys have that aren't attached to your trailer in the main parking lot. Um, if you don't have a trailer for whatever reason, um, you're encouraged to leave one vehicle in your campsite so you have a secure place to store things like uh, medications or what have you. Uh, the first year program looking um, full, well, not full in the sense that we don't have more room, but it's coming along pretty well. We've got uh, a, a very high capacity for that program, so there shouldn't be any concerns about people not making it in in time. You can send quartermaster myself or Linda and we'll help you out. Uh, early check-in times for Saturday afternoon, we're asking you to arrive between two and six. Uh, if you have to arrive outside of that time, please call ahead so we can uh, have somebody uh, ready to help you guys out. Um, if you plan on taking a swim check on Saturday afternoon, please plan to arrive closer to two. And if you don't need to take, take a swim check, please plan to arrive after four. Um, but between two and six, you'll be in good shape. Peter asks, uh, it says the original COVID guidance from the MCC did not allow for use of kids' mess kits. Uh, I did not see that in the guidance. Uh, I'm not sure if you can speak to that, Craig. Um, that was a conversation at one point. Uh, we are asking for mess kits this year um, and use the three, three bin wash and sanitize system just like you normally would. We will be using paper service more, and we will be using paper service at Beast Feast, but in your campsites, you guys will be using your mess kits. Unless your troops want also, paper service. Uh, go, I'm sorry for interrupting. That was it. Cool. Uh, there was also a question, uh, can parents share a tent with their children? Uh, I believe the discussion in the previous webinar was that youth protection uh, guidelines from BSA discourage it, but uh, it is uh, That's my understanding. Um, and, and across the board, as far as sharing tents, um, if you guys haven't heard, we are saying one scout per tent this year. Uh, the only exceptions to that are if two scouts live in the same house, they can share a tent, um, but they would also be need to be in the same patrol pod. So um, if that fits your situation, go for it. I am trying to scroll through here. Uh, any adult coming into camp will need um, all the paperwork. Um, 
Linda, if they're not staying overnight, do they still need A, B, and C, or do they just need A and B? I believe that was a situation in which uh, we would not be permitted, uh, based on our current COVID guidelines, to uh, allow guests into camp. That's a good point. Uh, Laura, reach, reach directly on that. If I'm understanding your situation right, um, re reach, out to, reach out to me directly on that, and we'll figure it out. Uh, if you're just to reiterate on the mess kits, um, if you want to use disposable plates in your campsite, you're welcome to do so, but we're not requiring it and we are not providing it. Um, so in your campsites, plan to use your mess kits. Outside of your campsites, um, plan for us to have and stuff. If you guys are um, planning a dish for Beast Feast, we are asking and encouraging you guys to try to figure out a way to um have disposable serving and stuff with that you know dixie cups or whatever it takes um but we we will be prepared to help with that if we need to uh campsite assignment questions please contact linda with regard to uh fully vaccinated scouts uh with respect to patrol pods uh the current guidance and regulations that the state of Michigan provides us uh, does not distinguish on how anyone vaccinated versus unvaccinated is treated with respect to the rules and social distancing. The supplemental, supplemental medical, um, if that's the form I'm thinking of, it is required for Anybody who is in a vulnerable class, um, meaning they have the, the various conditions that are considered high risk for COVID or are over the age of 60, they will need that form signed by their doctor. And yes, uh, all um, programs uh, in Merit Badges have a limit uh, for a first year camper. Uh, um, I'm sorry, there's a uh, cap attendance cap in each uh, merit badge and uh, first year campers include. Um, yeah, and that, that limit on first year camper is very high compared to any other class. I don't believe it's full anywhere in the system, but I could be mistaken. If you're having a concern with that one specifically, reach out to us and we'll help you out. Uh, question about parents dropping off scouts. Um, we are discouraging carpooling. So there'll be a lot of parents dropping off scouts. Uh, they will need to be screened and do the check-in just like anybody else. They don't need the paperwork because the understanding is that they're just coming in to drop them off and then they're leaving. Um, but if they're gonna be up here for a few days, then do all the paperwork. Uh, husband and wife can share a tent. Uh, Steve, I, I missed your honor troop question. If you want to type it into the thing, we'll try to answer it here. Uh, just to clarify for um, John, uh, like parents that would normally be arriving for uh, the Friday night fire and that kind of stuff. The current guidance from the state of Michigan uh, says that we are not allowed to have parents joining us uh, for just the Friday dinner like would traditionally. Um, question being if uh, Signing up for 2022 is still a requirement for Honor Troop, and I believe the answer to that is yes, um, though I don't have it in front of me. If you'd like to uh, uh, shoot us an email, we'll, we'll get you the specific um, criteria for that award.
The parents dropping off the scouts um, do not need to do the 14 day screening, uh, assuming that they're just showing up and uh, leaving. And I have the honor troop requirements in my hands now and know that um, registering for 2022 is not a requirement for 2021. A uh, question about um, participation in different um, as uh, for Honor Troop. Um, we have done away with all of the percentage based things, you know, having X amount of percent scouts do this many merit badges and stuff like that. Um, the Beast Feast um, is listed on here, a uh, criteria for the Honor Troop Award. However, for the troops that would rather not because of COVID concerns, we are uh, working on an alternate for that to answer your question, Chuck. Uh, yeah, we'll have this presentation on the website. As far as sharing the honor troop requirements online, uh, my current thinking is to not publicly share those uh, at this point because we may be making adjustments to the requirement. Uh, like we've restructured a lot of um, the past requirements to be more COVID friendly and COVID compliant. Uh, so we may still be making adjustments to that as we go through the summer. And we don't want um, you guys planning for something that ends up changing when you arrive on Sunday. Thanks, David. Um, there was a question regarding um, part-time adults and uh, this pertains primarily to our smaller units who have to uh, adults coming and going. Um, we're handling those all on a, uh, a one by one um, situation, but uh, essentially, yes, if uh, they have to leave camp for a reason and they plan on coming back, they will need to continue to do the screening every day until they, uh, until they return. Well, all right, guys, um, we're going to call this the cleanup question phase. If there's something that we still haven't addressed, please get it into the chat here in the next couple minutes. And uh, as always, we look forward to seeing you guys and having you guys back in camp this summer. We are uh, getting everything ready and, and excited to have you. Um, to thank the team that we've had putting these webinars together. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed them and found them beneficial. Uh, David Couts is uh, one of our assistant camp directors and he's been feverishly working the chat and answering questions. Chris Hopkins, the council uh, uh, chief information officer, has been the man behind the curtain for every webinar that has been done ever this year. So he's a very busy man and um, this wouldn't be possible without him as well as the rest of our management and our program team that keep these going. Uh, just saw a quick question about um, insects. Uh, yeah, the DNR is expecting, um, there's a high tick and mosquito stuff going on this year. Uh, we will be taking the same preventative measures in the past to help try to keep that under control. Uh, yes, anybody that comes into camp will need to do the two week screening, regardless of whether or not they've been vaccinated. Um, we're everybody who can to get vaccinated, but as far as the guidance from Lara and our COVID uh, protocols are concerned, it's just a bonus. Uh, we are working on how we're going to do the judging for the cooking contest and we'll have information on that when you guys get to camp. Uh, I would say for the cooking contest, if anybody was there last summer with our little stands and the check-in, it's going to be very similar to that. 
However, we are just changing who judges who, and who goes around. And uh, I'd just like to say, uh, as a leadership team, we really appreciate everyone's cooperation uh, as the guidance from the state has been changing routinely. Uh, obviously, we're on a positive momentum with um, the way the state has changed COVID guidelines applying to our summer camp operations. And uh, if there are any changes, the council and uh, us as the camp management will do our best to communicate those to you as we find out about it. And uh, we really appreciate you all working with us and being understanding of the situation. Thanks, David, and thanks all of you. As mentioned, this is our last webinar before camp. So I don't have another webinar to tell you to look forward to. But uh, if anything comes up, as always, my email and cell phone are on the screen. Read uh, cell phone tends to be best this time of year. Um, and I uh, look forward to seeing all of you guys at camp and having a fantastic summer here at Cole Canoe Base.